morning everyone today we're going to talk about my roster for a singles event that i'm going to tomorrow um it's not super different from a lot of the convocation rosters i've been playing a couple changes here and there we'll talk about um it is not my squad goals list because i will be losing probably rhino and lizard from this particular roster in fact oh i know i'm losing rhino um which is okay. I, I'm not really even 100% sold on Lizard in this list. Um, we'll talk about that. And Rhino, I'll replace him probably with Ancient One. Um, but let's talk about this list. So, so what is the idea behind this? Obviously, it's Wizards without being Wizards. There's only four true Wizards in this roster. Strange, Voodoo, Baron, Mordo, Wong. And then you just have a bunch of splashes. Um, the other thing that's probably noticeable is, hence the name of the list, is most of these models, the only ones that aren't on large bases or medium bases are... Wong and Nick Fury. And Wong you're never going to go to. Nick could even be changed if I really wanted. Um, and that's not unintentional, but it is, you know, just the good models with bumps and they're just good models, period. So we'll, we'll go top to bottom just because if you're not a constant viewer, you might not have heard some of my other ramblings on, on you know, convocation and whatnot. So Strange, Voodoo, Wong, I think are, are, are three convocation models you almost will never not take. Um, some of the, I mean, Strange, you're going to take, Strange and Wong, you're always going to take, right? Like you pretty much have to take them in your roster. If you're not playing with Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, um, what are you doing, right? What's the, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, great five threat, super fun leader. Lots of options with Scalpel. Um, I use him every game, though there are some point values here where even I'll consider not using him. Um, Mordo, again, you, you have to take some affiliate models to get different packages, right? So if you think about the, the threats we have here, we have a 5, 4, 3, 2. You need to take at least three of them because this roster can only go three wide if it goes unaffiliated with like Strange, Juggernaut, Ultron. So let's just assume you're always going to be at least four wide. It means you'd have to have at least three convocation models. And so you have a couple packages, which is like Wong, Mordo, Strange, which is 10 threat. And then Doctor Strange, Voodoo, Wong, which is 11. You do have a Voodoo, Mordo, Wong package of nine. Um, I'm not counting it out as a possibility to run that package. Um, but I've never ran it. Um, so the only other convocation model... So the two convocation models that are like borderline, I mean, Taskmaster is always an option for a three. You could add another three instead of Lizard. It could be like Magic or Task. And then I could see Ancient One being in here. And maybe as we talk, we'll talk about some teams that maybe Ancient One would be good at. Um, but it, it's kind of of the mind, and this, this sounds bad, but I'm kind of of the mind that I don't love convocation models besides like maybe voodoo strange and wong even mortal is like borderline for me but i love the leadership and i love what like strange brings so i feel like having to take maybe a quote-unquote subpar three for what it brings to the splashes i am fine with it is probably the best way to put it um so those are the four convocation models i have then we have splashes we have ultron juggernaut so two, five, three, fours, and a three. So Ultron, Juggernaut, Rhino, Modok, Nick, and Lizard. Um, probably the most questionable person I have in this roster is Lizard. Um, two reasons. One, I'm just not like a lot of the point values and the teams I make don't need an unaffiliated three. And I almost feel like there's more teams where I'd rather have Mordo be like Magic then like the option to have Mordo and Magic swap seems maybe more powerful than having a lizard in here. Um, I do want to touch on Jugs in the beginning. So I, I've talked about pretty much all the other models, not Lizard, but he doesn't need to be talked about in other videos. We know about the Strange, Mordo, Wong, Ultron, Modoc team. You've seen it. Um, I've streamed with something similar with Task. Um, ooh, What's his name again? Ust the guy who created it, the Austrian guy, you still be on the forums. I forgot his real name. Damn it. Um, I mean, he's the one who really, despite what anyone says in any videos, 
he is the one who really pioneered it as far as like making it popular and playing it. And then I took it from him. And because I make videos and he doesn't, people think that I quote unquote invented the Modoc 2 Ultron thing. Um, I just used it on stream and talked about it. Um, I mean, you still have to use it and show it off and, you know, Kyle showed it off in the TTS League and stuff like that. So it's becoming more of a thing. Um, but it definitely wasn't my originating, so I will not claim that. Um, anyway, you know about that team. So Jugs is the only, like, I won't say spicy because uh, is Jugs spicy? Maybe, maybe not. But he is the splash that I am trying for this event, and I'm pretty excited to try him. So I'm going to go here just so it's a little bigger. Um, so... Why do I want to play with Juggernaut? So, I mean, from a convocation, what do we always talk about? We always talk about, let's look at the Mystic Defense just to see. He has five versus four. Thumbs up. He doesn't have anything extra for Mystic uh, attacks. Like, he doesn't um, count blanks or anything. But five dice with DR to zero is pretty good. Um, he, can't, he does have helmet, so he can't be pushed or advanced by it. So that is nice because... There are attacks where you do get around um, the push effect. So we've talked about this before. Like I think one thing that people don't realize is like if Hulk hits him with his builder and books is up, he doesn't get to push Juggernaut, like or or Ultron or Modok. If an enemy Ultron spenders in the middle of your team and gets the push trigger, he doesn't push these guys because it turns into a Mystic attack and they're immune to the push and advanced of enemy special effects and mystic attacks. So just being like models that are immune to being advanced or pushed, like have a lot of play, I think in the meta right now, whether it's Thanos or whether it's webs or, or even just random things that want to push you off points. Um, so having a couple of humble people is always nice. So that, that's obviously a big thing is, is the mystic defense and being good with books. He's a big base. You know me and I love my big base bumps. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't love... I think Juggernaut's one of those models where when I play against him, he's highly annoying. And when I think about him, I feel like his play pattern of walk, punch, do whatever doesn't feel as nice in my head as it does on the table. I think the thing that you kind of have to see on the table more so is the mobility of him where walk, punch, slide is a very long distance, and an 8 dice attack plus a slide can be a lot of damage. Um, so it's just, and then obviously some other things. Okay, he's immune to stagger, essentially, unless he doesn't have power, which is kind of nice when you're playing against black cats and stuff. Um, he can go through terrain that's size 3 and destroy it. So this has two synergies. One being it, it brings back Ultron Grunts, which is great, and we'll talk about how that interaction works. And two, it's just like... If your enemy has a lot of throws and you're worried about getting throw damage, you can just, like, stampede or whatever. Nothing stops the Juggernaut through a couple terrain pieces. And all of a sudden, it's, it clears the board, right? You can clear the board out. And since he can go through size threes, it's actually really impactful. Like, he can destroy some very significant terrain. If you're playing Magneto or something, just fucking, you know, walking through all his terrain early on can be really obnoxious for him. Um, so that kind of thing has some nice synergies. Uh, I mean, he's not that much of a special card. I mean, he's special, but he, he's not much to say. He has two good attacks. He gets a bunch of dice. He walks. He pushes. Um, he has a very good taxes card And Do You Know Who I Am. So you can spend three power and you can play, throw a terrain or characters within two uh, long. So this is usually used to throw like somebody out of the game. So like, it's really nice on like Ultron because you essentially like, stagger him maybe even more because long is obviously longer than medium so getting back to where he was is hard um doing it to big models like small movers i mean it's just if you think of the tools we have with ultron advanced strange bow uh strange tel scalpel um like just having another one that can like move somebody off it's a lot of control i mean he has a push on his sizeless push on his strike on a wild and he has that and obviously he can still do damage like if you throw a Hulk at somebody, if they don't have a brace up. So some combos that are kind of funny is he kind of pairs well with Ultron. And now you'll you'll hear me. Hey, oh, Ultron and him at 10 points. How are you even going to run both? I'll tell you a squad that can run both. But you can also run the 9 point and run him at 19, which which is I'm definitely like not unconsidering. 
Um, but at 20, you can run Strange, Mordo, Wong, Juggernaut, Ultron. And I actually think it's a really strong 20 um, on certain scenarios. But some cool interactions would be, um, let's say you don't have Ultron drones up, but you don't want to go with Juggernaut. You can throw terrain with Do You Know Who I Am before you choose who to activate, and then you can create the grunts, and then you can activate Ultron, and dr grunts get to attack and be in position or do whatever they want to do um, for the turn. That's one interaction. Another one would be during Ultron's turn, you could position the grunts in a way that if they die, um, they're going to hit a lot of people with their explosion. And let's just say Ultron doesn't have the power to throw or whatever. You could, do you know who I am? somebody into the grunts in between Ultron and their activation. So you walk, shoot somebody, get in position. Do you know who I am? Somebody into the grunts, kill them, explode. Ultron gets a bunch of power. Ultron goes, Ultron throws terrain, brings back the grunts. And depending on how much power he has, he could even spend or somebody into those grunts and KO them again. So um, there are some interactions that are pretty cool. If your grunts like take damage from Mordo's like, extra dice and they're down to one life juggernaut can actually run into them with his stampede and blow them up himself um yeah there's just some cool interaction with like do you know who i am another interesting do you know who i am interaction that's actually probably well they're both useful but even one when he's not is so normally you know two in trains you understand it's this thing but like one thing that probably people don't you can probably catch somebody off guard is if you attack him and he bumps, first he bumps really far, right? So if you're range three, if you're shooting Juggernaut from range three and you hit him, he will bump within two of you. He can, assuming there's room. And so there's worlds where, like, you attack him, he bumps at you, and then he gets to do you know who I am in my turn. So, like, you might have thought you set up to, like, oh, I'm out of two, my Hulk's not, or, you know, my X model's not going to get to you know who I am. And all of a sudden, he bumps into range of one of your models of terrain and throws it at you instantly. So, I think with Bump, he's, like, super mobile. I mean, just, in, and the nice part about nice punch is that the reduction to zero is you can kind of choose if you want to take no damage or not. If it's, sometimes you want to take damage to get the power. And now you have an extra layer there to say, I want to take damage to get the power and the bump. So, you know, taking a ping here and saying, all right, well, I'm going to get the bump and then I'm going to have the power to do you know who I am, throw you back into my team. Um, I think there's a lot of options with Juggernaut. Um, and, you know, just it just being, a, it's the same with like Rhino. Like Rhino has aggressive, obviously, and, and robbery, but just having these like big bumpers that kind of want to dive people just causes havoc. Um and, and can really waste activations because you attack and they all have DR and they're all, I mean, like Rhino, they're not like tanky, unbelievable. They can die if you focus them, but with bumps and stuff, it's hard. It's hard to reliably, and I think that's get them in one go. And I think that's one of the strengths of Convocation is you can have these activations where like Ultron, Juggernaut, Rhino are like starting in the enemy's team and you're not always worried about them like instantly dying before they activate, right? So you can do somebody in the back. You can do somebody else. I think one thing that happens with like weenie teams, especially let's just say all three threats, which is good teams. I'm not, I'm not downgrading these teams. I'm just saying one thing that can happen is it's very easy that if you don't have priority, you just lose somebody before they go. And then you might have to do somebody else because they're on one life, right? And so you, you have all these instances where potentially your activation order is a little bit more forced because you're a weenie. Like, whereas Juggernaut, if he has six life left with bump and reduction, most things are not going to kill Juggernaut from six life with all that up and maybe even books. You have to make the decision. So you can go with somebody else. Juggernaut gets hit. And when he's about to die, like when he's on the brink of like, I don't think he's arriving every activation, then you go with him and do your thing. Uh, healing's nice on him with Wong. He's good at, you know, is there another one? I think just bumping into people. I think it's like with between Ultron and him, like you have a lot of ways to ping people. So, you know, there's options where if somebody's just on one life sitting there, you can guarantee the death by just like walking and sliding into them, which is, I think, a very powerful tool. Not having to rely on dice, not having to rely on anything. No brace, no nothing. You can just ping into them as long as they're not like Bill or Thanos. Um, immune to stun, always nice on like Fisk and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to try him. Um, 
I think I was always like looking for a five threat to like. So I was looking for a five threat to replace Ultron on like D maps where I need to be a little more mobile, and he's really good on them because, like, walk slide I believe gets you between two Ds, and you still get to make your attack. So your play pattern hate that word, but I use it. The play pattern is still very good on that. Like it's almost ideal for that. And he can push somebody off and he's tanking, he's bumps, blah, blah, blah. Whereas Ultron doesn't really have that. And so what that kind of led to was, I was like, oh, okay, he's pretty good on Ds and stuff like that. And Bs, he can get back side to side and whatnot with all the pushes. And then I was like, well, you know, I've been playing this 20 that I claimed was really good, which was, you know, if I want to do 20, that half is strange. Let's just force strange and let's force Ultron, right? So I was running, I would never run that 20. Is that 20? It's hot garbage. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want Wong in there. Right? I was running this squad all the time. And I said it was really good, and I didn't lose a lot with it. I was like, Scoundrels. Scoundrel Scrolls is a common 20. That Obviously, it has to be 20, but it's a common one that a lot of people take both of those. Um, and so I was playing this one a lot, and the... I, it was a strong team, don't get me wrong. The thing that I was probably the most, like, weird about it is, look at this team. Who's picking up the scrawls, right? Who's picking up a flank scrawl? If I own the prize, it's it's Strange can do it, but I don't love to do it. A, Rhino was a lot of time going and picking up because... If there was a terrain piece to like block the push and then I had bump so where if somebody risked bumping me I could like get to their point with aggressive and bump or bump back to my own point. So he was like on the safer side. And then sometimes the middle one was weird because who's taking the middle one here? It's either Voodoo Strange or Ultron. They all feel a little weird to take it because Voodoo it's like okay do you want an extract on him early? You know Ultron I like to take the enemy one if I'm gonna if I'm gonna commit to like going up there. I'm going to probably take the enemy one and make it hard for them. And again, strange. It's just like you're kind of wasting air quotes. It feels like you're wasting an activation doing it. Um, so it didn't feel good to pick up the scrolls. And then, you know, it, a lot of the times I end up picking them with Rhino and Voodoo. And so their steals aren't as relevant. Now, of course, you're playing the secure game. You have displacement and all this kind of stuff. And then late game, if you need to steal, if they come take your Rhino one, you have Robbery and, and Voodoo to take it back. And so I was thinking about this, and I was like, well, I'm going to lose Rhino for squad goals. And so I'm probably going to bring Ancient One in. And she's not, you know, Ancient One in this team is whatever. Modok is not a bad one to put in, you know. And then I was like, man, you know, I've been playing a little bit more Mordo and, and running this thing. Screw it. We're going to run really thin on the Convocation side. What can I get? Right, so so essentially, if you look at, it, I, I think of things in like pairs a lot. So I, I get the pair of Mordo Juggernaut over Voodoo Rhino, right? And I think it depends on what you're against. But depending if you're prior and all this good stuff, do you need the steals, right? If you're playing Scoundrel Scrolls, first off, Scoundrels there's more secure points than scroll points, so I think steals are a little bit less relevant because as long as you can hold on and keep parity there, you're going to be playing the Scoundrel game, right? Now, if you're playing Scoundrels, maybe cubes or something, you might, or hammers, and you're playing 20, you might want to have steals in line. And it really depends on priority and all this stuff. But just think about it with Scrawl, Scoundrels, and the same idea I was talking about with the complication. I was like, who's going to take it? Well, now you have Jugs to take a side Scrawl, which is great. He's tanky. He has bump. He has four physical defense. Like, there's maybe terrain to stop him from pushing. Like, you don't care if he grabs one. Because if they do it wrong, he's potentially bumping to their point or bumping to your point. And then you're fine. Um, compared to, like, Rhino doing it. Rhino's, like, still good at doing it, but it feels a little bit weirder because of that. And Jugs also has a little bit better power economy um, after, the, like... Jugs on his own just walking and punching people is doing stuff. Rhino kind of has to get going before he can, like, stampede and, and do a bunch of attacks. So that's one plus. And then you have do you know who I am and all this good stuff. And then you say Mordo. Okay, well, Mordo has a medium base, medium move. He's a three threat. Like, if you're going off the idea that Voodoo's going to walk to the scroll, pick it up, get pushed, walk to a side, um, walk to a side uh, secure... 
in the back and sit there. I mean, that's what my voodoo did a lot until like maybe late game I needed to um, go like possess somebody. But if that's Mordo doing it, like, are you really complaining about that? Like, that's pretty good, right? If he's sitting on a point with a scroll, I mean, he's susceptible to dying, but I still have to go at him on a back point with books and bump up. And then your Jugs is like in their face and your Exchange is in their face and your Ultron is in their face. Um, like, like that team could have... like, And you can also steal their scroll with Ultron, depending. So that's another thing. Like, if, if Jugs walks up to the midline and gets pushed even in their team, first off, we've talked about this before, with, it, it's just a pain in the ass to like put attacks on people, right? If you're already committing that somebody has to go get the other side scroll before they take it, Somebody potentially has to get your mid scroll before they take it. You're probably five to six wide, depending. And if you're weenies, if you're six wide, your, your two threats are not going to fucking destroy Juggernaut. And so, and you have to walk to the, the scrolls or the, the scoundrels. So, like, really, how many attacks are you getting on Juggernaut reliably? And then the point being is, like, even if he takes a lot of damage, he can actually get the hell out of there, like. Like, I had a Juggernaut in the way I played this game where it took a bunch of damage from, like, six. And then I just, like, double walk, slid, slid back to my my team because I had three scrolls, I think, at that point. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. And heal him with Wong. And then he's annoying in the back. Like, he, the fact that he can, like, dip in and out is, is pretty nice. So I actually think that team on scrolls is, like, really good. Um, one little interaction that's cute with Mordo is Mordo and um, Juggernaut is Juggernaut can boost his dice or Mordo can boost his dice and Juggernaut can pay to reduce the damage, which I mean, turn one, you could get a 10 dice if they're on the midline or something, you get a 10 dice turn one attack on somebody plus the, the, the push in damage from the thing. So you could be looking at an auto damage plus ten dice, um, and let's just let's just do the math on it, right? Let's just say you're you're rolling ten dice, and they let's just say they're a three dicer. Let's just say they have four defense dice. They're just some three threat, and then there's one flat damage. Add the series. You have a fifty-seven percent chance to one shot somebody on the midline with five health. I mean, if it's like a three healther. Like, or a three defenser. Like, look at that. Oh, I, I clicked right. <laughs> that's, that's additive. I mean, you're 65% chance to take him out. Like, that's a risk that's really hard to take. And he has a lot of control turn one with, um, do you know who I am? So, I think the synergies are all there. I think, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't see it before. It's, it's funny how, like, I'm so set on this roster because probably I was anti three threats. And then you say, well, I'm going to lose Rhino and I'm going to gain Jugs. What can I do? Oh, I can drop Voodoo to Mordo. Now, just to come, come all back, back to the roster, the, the thing you'll kind of notice is there's like a nice little mix of, when you look at my splashes, scenario and look at my, if you look at my four or five, fours and fives, right? I have a nice mix of center stuff, D-shape stuff. Like, if you're in a D-shape, if I'm on a D-shape, I'm on my point value. Because I have I don't have Ds. So I'm on, and I'm not going to pick their Ds. So if I'm on, I'm on 19 or 20, because you guys know what I run. I run the big points and then gamma. So if you think about it from that perspective, if I'm on 19 D-shape, I could run Strange, Mordo, Wong, Rhino, Juggernaut. And they're two really good models at at running around and, and going back and forth. And then Mordo can just run to a side and do some objective bullshit. Obviously, Voodoo's there good as well. I could run, I mean, another 19 I thought of. If you really are on stuck on some like really scenario-based thing, like maybe Senators or something versus Scenario Team, you could run... Strange, Voodoo, Wong, Fury, Rhino, those three. Yeah. So you could have a bunch of extract pressure by double grabbing with Fury and then having two steals to back it up, um, depending on that. So one, one question I've always tried to deal with is, you know, 17, like, 
spiders and stuff, right? And so against like webs. And so I think there's a couple teams here that interest me against webs. Um, there's some four wider. What is this shit? Oh, is this still? Oh no, that's a seventeen. I'm gonna go seventeen. And this is where like I thought magic might be useful because if you think of like this team with magic, right? That's a lot of anti-web stuff you got to steal this team with magic you know eh, lizard's not that great there right i think the one i one cool one i wanted to try this with magic would be pretty good is where is it this one this one right here but mordo is magic i think that's pretty legit versus webs you have two mystic attackers you have Two steals, you have somebody that can early, like, be annoying and grab, like, double grab some stuff and at least make them work for it. Um, if it's more of, like, a... Now, one thing to note is I have center, two center secures, gamma. So, if you get, like, gamma cubes, you might not want to go, like, five wide on that because you're just going to get eaten up by the damage. Um, and so, you can go more of a four wide, maybe a juggernaut version or, and this is where, like, even having the the Ancient One version where Ancient One replaces Rhino, where you could go, like, this team with Ancient One and Magic, for example. And that's a lot of offensive power on a, on a tight shape to kind of displace them and attack them with Mystic Attacker. So maybe I'm, I need to try and test it out more, but that's the idea behind it. And that's why Lizard is, like, I just don't know where I'm taking him that much. So, like, sorry, I'm coming back here. If you can, and this is a great tool, by the way, to kind of like look at teams. So if I say I'm going to take Lizard, right? So I'm never going to take him at 15. I'm not taking that garbage. Am I going to take him at 16? I, maybe that first team is pretty good on like Paranoia. The only time I'm playing 16 is on Paranoia, unless I choose it on somebody's Fisk. Because otherwise, I'm probably not going to choose their Secures if they have Fisk in there. And so... Am I playing any of these teams on Paranoia? Maybe the first one's pretty good. Uh, maybe the last one's pretty good. I, I'm not in love with it. I think there are things you can do four wide that can be equally as strong, like going Strange, Voodoo, Wong, um, like Juggernaut or Ultron or something, especially because it's probably going to be on a tight shape. Now, sure, Paranoia, Scandal 16. This, this might actually have a lot more uses because... Um, I'm gonna have Pryo, you know, Lizard can go grab one in the middle, or, but Chugs can do some of the similar shit. I, I don't know if I'm ever gonna play this one. 17, I mean, these could all be magic, and I don't think anyone would care. 18, I mean, like, I'm never running this team, these teams. Like, that's just, looks garbage to me. I'd rather just take Wong and upgrade Lizard. Like, the difference between Lizard and other things is just so much, like, it's just too much. 19... When am I taking him? Why am I doing this team? Like, the thing is, with the math, the way Convocation works, like, this team is almost always better to just take Wong and upgrade your Splash. Like, there's no way Mordo Lizard is better than Wong for threat. I mean, it's Rhino in this case, but it could be Nick or something. Like, there's a lot of games where Wong's just better than Rhino, or better than Mordo theoretically and this is where i said okay screw that you would just drop voodoo and then upgrade this to a five potentially same here so really 18 i think 18 has some uses because you know you're playing hammers or montessi so if, and you're probably playing on a d e shape and this is more understanding what combinations you can actually get like if i'm playing 18 it's only on montessi or or hammers because I always can play 19 or 20 on my secure. So, like, if I really think my 19 and 20 are so good, which I actually do think I have so many options with um, with the, the splashes I take, it's almost, like, made to have 19 or 20 point threats, then the only time I'm getting, like, 18 is with Hammers, Montessi, with priority. So it's okay. It's If it's Hammers... Okay, if it's Hammer's Scoundrels and they pick 18, right? What do you do? I, that's one where I would like Lizard, I think. Because I would consider... Is it 
It's 18, right? Yeah. There's one with lizard here that I like. Let me look. Oh, no. I want lizard. Um, this one. Hammers. Scoundrels. 18. I would consider this team. It's a little squishy. It's not a lot of damage. But you can double grab hammers with fury and set up some annoying shit early and try to get up and play the extra game. It's probably the game. And then Lizard can dive a back point and like take it from them. He has a throw. He has a push. You have a steal. It's not my favorite style of playing, but it, it can work. Um, I've played this team before on like hammers gamma or something where like, but see the thing if you're playing hammers too, strange can double grab hammers depending on the shape. Like if you're on an E shape, like, Strange can double grab hammers and just be on the back point, like, in the gamma if he wants. And, all right, do you really, and then, okay, you threaten the other one with Lizard, and you maybe you go aggressive to try to get points, and if they attack him, you bump, and then you wake up with a bunch of power and, like, throw people and be, like, um, you can be obnoxious with Lizard, but he's not, like, ending the world on any of these. I mean, sure, he's better on, like, very specific ones than Magic would be, but... There's also a lot of times where, like, having the option to take magic over Mordo versus, like, webs or something is maybe more important. Because I don't try to use Lizard a lot. 18 might be the only point value that I'm ever, like, man, I'm really glad I have Lizard in my list. Um, and even then, I just, like, this is where the margins come in, right? I'm going to lose him for squad goals, so it doesn't matter. He's probably going to be magic. Um, like, honestly, like, it's probably going to be magic and... Ancient one, which feels weird to have actually six wizards in my list, um, but it, I think it feels it feels fine. I think it gives you some weird, some interesting options of like going ancient one, like you could go ancient one Mordo, like ancient one Magic Wong is nine jugs and another three. Is that any good? I don't know. There's points out there that I haven't thought of everything through yet. You could go... I guess at 18. Ah, they're, they're out there. I haven't thought of them all the way through yet. You can go Strangest Ones. I mean, there's World... Listen, uh, Ancient One is probably the one thing I like is if you go 19, 18 and it's a Montessi, like Montessi Demons, I would... I would consider going Ancient One, Mordo Wong, Ultron, Modoc. Like, I actually think the Ultron pair with MODOK on Ease might be strong enough to go Strangeless. Because if you're on Ease, like, he's very good. I will never say Strange is not good. But the way it plays, it really is more about the other two. And an Ancient One is a fine attacker with a good spender, especially if you're on, like, a tight shape. And sometimes, like, the teleports are good, but not as needed, right? Of course, he snipes from back in the thing. So, I'm not going to say that that is, like... I could see if, if I could see a world where these two, like I don't even like Nick that much. I'm keeping him in because he has some extra shit, and I'm going to give it a, a good college try. I do not like it that much. I've played it at least six or seven, six to eight times right now. It's not a ton because it doesn't come up a ton. I just, I'm not in love with it. It feels like you're holding on for dear life, and and I don't like it. I mean, there's nothing else to say. I feel like I'm holding on for dear life. And if my opponent just... I feel like my agency isn't there and it bothers me. I, I don't... I could see dropping him. I'm going to keep him for now. I'm going to test him. Um, nothing crazy about the cards. I mean, you're kind of forced into almost everything here. I guess... UK, which... I This doesn't have enough Mystic Attackers to play to take play in the Poldock. I take Fallback. Um... This is a robbery, sure. Okay, if I take, if I have to change out Rhino and Lizard, it'll be magic. It'll be Ancient One, and then I'll take Planes of Poldock over. This is a robbery because I'll have enough Mystic users to actually justify it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I'm really excited to play this list. I the Juggernaut, like, it just, it just. I've been liking Mordo a bit. I'm not going to go too much into how much my three threats feel. I mean, it's a three threat. Pick Dash Maxer, pick Magic, pick Mordo, whatever. If you think of Mordo as just like, I have a medium base, medium move, and I can do some kind of cool scenario jank with like, not jank, but you can do like pseudo 
um, Eyes of a Prize stuff. So, like, for example, um, you can reach, you can stand on a B or a F and reach a midline objective like hammers with eyes on the prize. And so normally, you know, you walk up, pick it up, walk away. But since a lot of the times you want to sit on the objective anyway, your that second walk is only kind of getting you like back to the scoundrel. But Mordo can walk up and if you place perfectly, I'm using my hand, you can't see it. If you place perfectly, you can walk up, get on the scoundrel, be within range two of the hammer, meditate, and then pick it up with the extra power. So you eye on the prize, walk, meditate, grab the hammer. Now you're sitting on the point. Sure, you're a little far forward. But you're on the you're on the you're on the scoundrel and you can just bump away if they attack you. So that's kind of like a nice like pseudo safe grab where you can actually eyes on the prize if you don't have priority. It's not good on scrolls because you're gonna get pushed away, but virus. If you'd play virus scoundrels, it's not a bad one to kind of keep one safe. Um, if you don't want to like go up and be like smacked, like you could, you could walk up, like you could fan out in a way that like, okay, Ultron goes and grabs the middle and just say, fuck you, I'm Ultron. And then Mordor goes and grabs the side one, um, potentially. Yeah. I wonder if there's a world where I run these three. Plus these two at 19 on scoundrels. I mean, Strange is so good at scoundrels. But so are these guys. Like, like it's almost weird that, like, you're starting to see this world of the splashes are taking over and you're just supporting them with the wizards. And I want to, I mean, listen, I've done some shit with Strange. I, I think it's, it's, it's more subtle. Because, I mean, sometimes he just fucking kills something and teleports everybody away and it's amazing. Like, I had a game yesterday where he just, he did some damage and then he walked and, you know, he, he, I mean, in, in one turn, he KO'd Rhino, took his scroll, walked, teleported Bill off a point that he was standing on and teleported Ultron to another point and safely. So, I mean, he scored me like four or five points swing that turn. Amazing model. I think it, it feels a little more subtle because, like, when Ultron goes off, you are just like, I am KOing three people this turn because of the shit I'm doing. And so it feels more, less oppressive. So they're all good. I mean, these are three of the best fives in the game. I mean, let's not, let's not, let's not sugar. These are three of the best fives in the game under a leadership where they all benefit from it. Whether they're a big base or medium base bumping, they have books. I think that's the one thing that's the big takeaway. I, let's just take one more step back as a takeaway. If I had Bullseye in this list, I could run Modoc, Rhino, Bullseye, Ultron, Juggernaut at 20. And that is a pretty damn good 20 points. Or you can do the Cabal version where Modoc, Bullseye, Modoc is Red Skull 3. You could run Red Skull 3, Rhino, Ultron, Juggernaut, and they all have synergies. That is a pretty good team. In fact, it's a, I think it's a very strong team. The difference is, and I think you will notice this if you play these models. Being able to bump is so freaking big. It is so big. It is it is beyond like annoying when you bump and, and books. Like for keeping people alive. Like I get the MODOK thing with Ultron is really good. I'm getting it. And it, it works without books. But with books, I think it turns it up to 11. Because there are, you can untangle it sometimes. Especially if you don't have power and stuff. And if you do, like, the book synergy is just huge. I'm going to just say that. Hopefully they don't nerf it. Anyway, I've talked enough. I'll report back on how it does tomorrow. Thanks for listening.